my father and myself are running two family owned estates. So one is, uh, is Chateau de la Tour and the other one is, is Domaine Pierre Labbé. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I'm happy to emphasize on the Pierre Labbé wines because they're obviously a bit um, under the shadow of the, of the Chateau de la Tour. But, but as we work exactly with the same philosophy, with the same, uh, with the same identity, if I may say, um, I guess you're going to, you're going to, you're going to you're going to see you're going to you're going to see through the through these wines a bit of our of our dna you know how we like to do the wines uh what is our approach uh where we want to go as well when it comes to to viticulture and winemaking so i'm just going to try to give you a bit of insights uh, about what we do and and, uh, and 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 as wayne said it just just please jump in uh, let's make it fun let's make it interactive because uh, uh, I'm already a bit nervous speaking, speaking, speaking in front of you. So, uh, so please jump in, uh, and, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, so as we discussed, uh, I, I would like to start with a, with a small presentation. So I hope it's not going to be too boring, but I think it's going to be, give you good insights, uh, about our, about the two estates and, and the philosophy. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, it will be a very, very short presentation about five ten minutes uh, and again if you have any questions please feel free to jump in and ask so that's um, so that's the presentation i wanted to share with you so beautiful pictures taken over uh, on top of of the the village of, of chambon musigny is on on the right side uh and and you can see the club Bougeau on the on the on the back right side and, and the beautiful coast. Uh, so you can see the museum on the, on the right side, the Club Bougeot, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, good picture, I like it. So as, 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 as Guy told you, we are, uh, my father and myself are uh, managing two different estates, two family owned estates, the Chateau de la Tour and the Domaine Pierre Labbé. Uh, all, but reason why I was showing you the Chateau de la Tour, and we're not gonna emphasize on it, uh, today is about Pierre Labbé. But all the winemaking is done, is done at Chateau de Tour, meaning that we, uh, uh, we pick the grapes from the different locations uh, on the different vineyards that we have, uh, from Meursault to Beaune, to Savigny, to Chorel et Beaune, to Gervais Chambertin. And we bring them straight away to the castle. And this is where all the, 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 winemaking, uh, the winemaking happens. So we work in organic viticulture since 92, uh, not certified though. And that's the first thing that I that we discussed with my father when I, when I, when I came back to the estate and, and started to work alongside me was to, was to, you know, for me, it had to make sense. You know, you, you can't claim anymore to be organic and to work in an organic, uh, in an organic way. If you're not certified, because you know, you could be 40, 90% organic, but not, not 100%. So I wanted, I wanted to make, to be, to be very clear. And so this is why we started the certification process. So it's a three years process that we, that we're gonna we're gonna get uh, for the next harvest. So I'm very happy. Uh, and again, the idea is not to, it's not to, um, uh, you know, do some marketing around it and put a stamp on the label, etc. It's just you know, it's just being clear in your mind and, and you know in what you do. We also we've also started working in biodynamic uh, viticulture since 2015. Um, so we will get back to it, but uh, you know, we true believers of of biodynamic viticulture, uh, you know, we've, we've seen the results. So how to measure the results, that's a, that's a, that's a trick, but, but as we do work in the vineyards all year long and since, since 15, we've seen major, major changes in the, you know, in the soils, in the, in the vigor of the, of the, of the vines on the, on the, on the leaves, on the, on the, you know, on the, on the plant system, if I may say, you know, all of this combined and plus, you know, having the, you know, taking into account the moon calendar, et cetera, all, all our works based on, on this is as just, you know, I think we've, we've, we've just, um, it's like a, layers of details, you know, and, and the more you had, the, the more, you know, you, you control what you're doing and the more the, the, the end result that is, that is the wine, you know, the, the, the wine in bottle, it's just, you know, it's just spectacular. So I think we, we true believers and we, we are very convinced. Uh, of course, we, we, we keep learning day after day, but, um, but it's very promising. Um, 15 was also the, the, the time where we stopped using any, you know, adding anything 
in, into our, our vinifications, so during the winemaking. So meaning no sulfites, uh, no entrants whatsoever. Uh, we work with uh, indigenous yeast. Um, so no sulfites added until the, the, the last moment, the bottling, of course, to protect the wines. Um, and this, this is just a, a, has just you know, brought us more purity to the wines. You know, of course, the, the, the specter of, of aromas have, have just turned from, from 180 degrees to all of a sudden 360, you know. And, and, and that way, we just, yeah, as I said, we, we're very convinced. Um, and uh, of course, we do quite long aging in barrels for the two estates from 18, 20 months for the Domaine Pierre Labbé to 22 months for the Chateau de la Tour because we like our wines to be, to be integrated, you know, and it needs time, it needs time, of course, and, and we're going to get back to it when we're going to be tasting the two, the, the three wines uh, and a bit of the differences when it comes to, to aging in barrels. Um, so not going to emphasize on the Chateau de la Tour. Uh, it's going to be for another time. Uh, today is about Pierre Labbé as we, as we discussed. So the, the roots of the Domaine Pierre Labbé is, is quite from a long time, you know, from the 15th century when my, so my Domaine Pierre Labbé is named for my grandfather, by the way. Um, so my grandfather's family, ancestors, uh, used to be wine growers, big ones in, 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 in bone. And this is where the, 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 the how to say, the, 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 main, the main place was located in bone. Uh, and they were doing also spirits. They were also spirits makers. So producing Mar de Bourgogne, Crème de Cassis, um, in, in Bonne. Uh, and 60 years ago, my, my grandfather, Pierre Labbé, started to develop his domain. And he started to buy different plots in different locations. So started, uh, he started in Chore de Bonne, uh, where we do our Bourgogne, Bourgogne Pinot Noir, Old Vines, Vieille Vigne. Um, then moved on to Savigny, Premier Cru Vergelès, and then different plots in Bonne, uh, with different climats. And we, uh, we bought the, um, a, a piece of land in, in, in Meursault in, in, and planted in 2002. So that's our youngest uh, vineyards uh, under the, the Domaine Pierre Labbé label. Uh, beautiful terroir that is Meursault Letier, and we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss about it uh, a bit later on. So that's a bit, that's a, like a, a bit to show you what we do. Our white appellation, appellation, sorry, our red appellations from Bourgogne Générique to Village to Premier Cru. So, Premier Cru Couchoria in white, I say soon because we planted the, 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 the vines uh, four years ago. So, we're soon going to get the first harvest. So, very excited about it. And this is a bit to show you, like some maps to show you uh, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the, the plots are located. So, Merceau, Bonne, Savigny, uh, Jevray Chambertin, where we have three different plots, three small ones. Uh, they're all old vines. So when we, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so we can we can discuss face to face. Uh, the meaning of old vines is very. Uh, I would say it's up to everyone to call it old vines because there's no legal restriction about it. Like it could be 20 years old, 40, 60 years old vines. It doesn't really matter, but for us, it has to make it has to make sense, obviously. And this is why, when we when we when we label our wines old vines, the uh, they are at least sixty years old. So that's our that's our uh, minimum uh, legal age, if I may say. Um, so that's it. Uh, I just wanted to share it with you the the, the 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 presentation, just for you to have a kind of a big picture of of what's going on into the into the estates. And, um, and I think that we can start. So I just uh, poured myself a glass of uh, Marconnet, Claude du de Marconnet, Bonne Claude du de Marconnet 17. Uh, and maybe we could start by, by speaking a bit about the 17 vintage. I think it will give you, uh, even though maybe most of you know about the, the 17 vintage, but it will give you a good insight. So obviously 17, you have to understand that 17 came right after 14, 15, 16, which were uh, tricky vintages in Burgundy, you know. 16, we, 16, we lost 50% uh, of, the, of, the, of the yield of the harvest because of the, um, uh, because of the frost, the April, uh, April frost damages. Uh, 
and everybody was just scared, you know, that the that the that the situation was going to happen again and again and again. So, uh, so seventeen was like a regular vintage, which was amazing for us. Um, and again, a story in 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 seventeen, we are so scared about uh, about the frost that in the Club Bougeot, uh, alongside with Jean Nicolas Meo and Etienne Griveaux, we uh, we we booked a chopper. So yeah to create some hair on top of the Club Bougeot to protect the vineyards uh, from the frost. And that was kind of insane, you know. I know it's, I know it's not the, the most uh, ecological way, but it was like, we're just so scared of losing another harvest, another yield that we, that we did that. But finally, I mean, uh, the growing season was, in 17, was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty tranquil, like pretty, there was no further incidents, nothing like this. And we started digging very early. Uh, we, we started begin, uh, picking our, our Chardonnay on the 6th of September. So you have to imagine in 10 years, we lost, I mean, there's almost a month gap uh, between the picking dates. Uh, in the early uh, 2000s, uh, we started picking in October. And, and all of a sudden, in 17, we, pick, we, picked, we started picking in on the, on the 6th of September, which was, which was insane. So what does it mean? It means like a, a beautiful maturity, uh, obviously a warm, sunny, sunny uh, summer. So that's, you know, that brought a bit of the, the DNA of the vintage, uh, you know, and I guess you're gonna, it's gonna reflect on the wines, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, it gives like very, very silky wines, you know, very fruitful, uh, um, very appealing, you know. And again, this is, this is where I want to speak about the whole bunch because whole bunch has been a, it's been a, the DNA of the of the of the of the of our uh, winemaking approach since uh, since a long time since eighty seven, eighty seven was the first year when my father started doing whole bunch, and back in the days you know whole bunch was like, you know it was like, people were like. Why are you doing this? Are you, are you crazy? Like, what's the point? Like, uh, you know, in the in the in the 80s, uh, you know, it was tough to get the maturity. Uh, we could speak we could speak almost about green, you know, green vintages. But his idea was to kind of produce the wines that were done before the wars. You know, where the whole bunch was like was like on the main stage, and. Um, and so he started to, to, to apply the whole bunch vinification to all the reds, not only the Grand Cru, you know, started from the, from the Bourgogne, générique, to the village, to the Premier Cru, to the, to the Grand Cru. And today, it's still very much what we do. And I guess if, you, if you've tasted our wines or if you taste it now, you, you know, even though 17 is very warm, again, uh, there's a beautiful, uh, you know, fresh, freshness, like, like tension uh, brought by the whole bunch. And it gives you almost you know, uh, hints of, of, of mint, you know, of licorice notes, you know, and, and that's why we like, you know, because, because Burgundy, it shouldn't be, it should be, I don't know if it's a word, but overtaking, you know, it should be precise, it should be, it should be finesse, you know, all about finesse, etc. And that's what we like to do. And it should bring you towards the next, the next glass. That's what's supposed to be. And, and um, and yeah, whole bunch is 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 um, you, again we're convinced about it. Uh, and there's ways of of working the whole bunch, you know, uh, during the vinification, during the wine making. Are you gonna do crush whole bunch? Are you gonna do whole bunch? Are you gonna do seventy percent and a bit of destem, whatever? You know, it's it's all trials that we do years after years to to find a bit of. A, to find a bit of our, uh, you know, what could what could improve the wines, you know, what could what could bring us towards, you know, um, what we like, you know, and that's what I said, you know, that's that's the purity, that's the precision, and uh, and um, and I guess it's 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 shown in this uh, in this in this Bon Marconnet, you know. So during the vinification, so we like to do layers, of course, of, of I, I mean about the fermentation. Huh? Then what's the once the um, Fermentation is done. We, we like to, 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 to so we, we, we like to, as I told you a bit earlier, extend, you know, do those long aging in barrels. And then we adjust a bit the percentage of New York. 
So for the village, uh, the percentage of New York is quite, it's quite low. Uh, we're around 30%. Uh, because the wood shouldn't take over, you know, shouldn't take over the flavors. It should be, as I said, integrated, you know. Uh, so we like to do, uh, you know, our ways to, to, to cook, the, you know, the cooking of the barrels. We like to keep it very, very subtle on the, on the village and on the, on the, on the Bourgogne. Um, just to, to let the fruit just express more, you know. And because the structure of the wines doesn't, doesn't require, you know, uh, uh, all this New York, etc. It, it, it wouldn't integrate it. And then we do quite long aging, as I said. So, for instance, for the for the 2018, we rack the wines uh, in in March. Then we let them we keep them steady, you know, in 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 tanks, stainless steel tanks. And then we bottle a month after, you know, just to keep them a bit steady. And this is where we we're gonna do. We're gonna add like the sulfites. Just to protect them, but during the during the there's no sulfide hiding from the from the harvest to almost the bottling, which which led the wines again, you know, works on them on them own and, and just just express themselves, you know, on their own. And there was another question, but I, I didn't. Uh, there was another one about how long it can be laid down for. So the 2017 vintage. So Wait. laid down like keeping in your cellar. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I always say, you know, buy six bottles or twelves and drink drink one every two years or every year, and then you will find out for me. And, and just please let me know because I, I still haven't found out what's what's the best what's the best time to, to drink it. No, I'm just kidding, but just uh, um, I don't know. These wines are meant to be to be to be drank. Like honestly, right now it's beautiful. Um, I would keep it for maybe a few more years, but don't no need to wait for like. For like for like ten years, you know, I would say up to five, seven, up to five to ten years, you know, that's, that's that will be. Of course, the wine will evolve, uh, but but what we're seeking here is the fruit, you know, it's the it's the it's the silkiness, uh, and it's showing very well on the even on the early stages. So I wouldn't go too far. I would I would if you manage to keep it a bit, you know, for for a bit of time, that's that's perfect, you know, that's superb. But 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 drinking them even now. It's, no, it uh, matches pretty well. So. Great. Um, should we move on to the next one? Yeah. 2014. Of course. So, uh, as we discussed before we had this meeting, uh, actually, I, we ran out of uh, Bon Premier Cru Couchoria 14, sadly. Uh, so, I won't, I won't be able to taste it with you. Uh, maybe I'm going to buy a few boxes, a few cases. In, in, to get some, but uh, but but uh, I had the chance to taste it uh, to taste the Kusharia uh, six months ago, uh, so so I'm more than happy to talk about it and, and speak a bit about the 14 vintage, which was which was very different, obviously. Um, so 14 was was you know the, the growing season was was very challenging. Uh, the summer was was awful, like like cold, rainy, uh, and, and by the beginning of August, we were, you know, we, won't, we wondered uh, if, if, we, if we're going to have, a, to have sufficient maturity levels to make, to make good wines. And then the second half of August was just, was just beautiful, uh, very warm, very sunny. Um, September again, in, in line with the, with the end of August. And so that, that brought back the ripeness, you know, and the maturity, which was, which was you know, very well uh, timed, I would say. It was a good timing. And so we, we began picking on the, on the 18th of, of September. So there was a bit of, of sorting needed, uh, a bit more than, re, than, than, than usual. Um, but the fruit was very clean, uh, you know, very thick skins. That, 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 that the, the thick skins brought us the you know, the colors, the tannins very rapidly. Um, and, and, um, and that's pretty much it. So ch very challenging in the beginning of the season, uh, but then the, 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 the rest was, was easy. And actually we, we lived a, quite, a, quite a, a, decent, a decent vintage, I would say, I would say. And, you know, when we discussed about it before, I like to, because Les Couchoya, is a is a lieu dit. and um, and I like to investigate a bit about the names, you know, 
like uh, I don't know, les amoureuses, of course, les amoureuses means lovers, which is probably one of the most beautiful climat anyway. But I, I like to investigate and to understand what's what's beneath the name of the of the vineyards. So the the Kushoria is is located on the on the south part of Bonn and it's facing south, so it gets a lot of of sun exposure, you know. So lots of uh, it's quite low in altitude, quite protected. So it's a vineyard that that you know that keeps the, the, the sun, uh, the ripeness, and it's very much shown in the wine, you know, like the, the, the spiciness, the, the kind of the dark, dark fruit flavor, etc. Um, so to me, I was like Kushoya, but Kushoya in French, it pretty much means sunset. So I was like, I was like but that makes absolute sense. Kushoya, sunset, the ripeness, the sun, etc. And actually I, I did some studies, and Kushoya doesn't mean at all sunset. It means a completely different, 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 you know, different meaning. Um, it comes from two words from the old French, quash, which means bushes, and the uh, and réol in old French, which means steep. And actually, the, the slope is quite steep and it's quite it's quite bushy, you know. It's quite. And I was like, oh my god. All these years, I spoke about the Kushoya as the sunset, etc., trying to make it like very poetic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But actually, the old French just just let me down on that one. I was like, ha. Huh. So I don't know which version I'm gonna keep. I think I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna keep the two versions, but I I'll emphasize on the poetic one. But uh, but anyway, I was just for kidding. But but uh, but but I guess if if you if you've tasted the Kushoya before, or if you're doing it now, um, even though 14 was like a cold, a cold and rainy vintages at the beginning, I guess it, it shows you a bit the DNA, you know, like um, as we discussed, you know, uh, um, the, the, the spiciness, the red currants, you know, the, the floral and herbal notes that you get from the whole bunch vinification. Um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful terroir, you know, for me, it kind of, it kind of brings me a bit toward uh, like outside Burgundy, you know, sometimes on the nose, you know, especially because I get the, the richness, I get the ripeness that is a bit more south of France, you know, like in a way. But when it comes to, to, the, to the mouth, to the wine, uh, you get, the, you get the, the, the freshness, you get the tension, precision that is very Burgundy, you know. Um, so it's a beautiful terroir and a very beautiful terroir uh, that we really like. Um, and yeah, it's a, a premier cru, a, a very, a very beautiful premier cru uh, to me. So, uh, is there a question? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we, uh, why, why did we start with the red first before Mountain White? Is there, is there a reason for that? Yeah, I like to, so we like to do the reds first because the acidity of the wine, you know, before the reds, uh, I guess it's more a matter of acidity, you know. The white being obviously more, Having more acidity, I like it after, not to kill, you know, not, not to kill the palates, not to kill a bit, you know, not to kill, not to kill the flavors. So that's that, that's the way I like to do it. Uh, but this, like I say, there's not good or, or bad, bad, uh, bad approach. It's it's up to everyone. Well, the 2014 vintage. Do you prefer personally? Do you prefer the red or the white? It's oh. good point. It's a tricky question. Is it you or is it a, uh, yeah? It's from Alison, it's from Alison. Alison, that's a tricky question. Uh, um, uh, actually, I like, I, I like the reds. I like, I like how the, the, you know, we don't like the reds to be too, can I say masculine, too, too opulent, you know, too overbodied, you know? And um, and I'm not gonna lie. In, in over the last the last three vintages, like 17, 18, 19, you know, this is what we get. You know, like very sunny, very warm, almost dried, dried in 19. And um, and sometimes that scares me a bit because I don't want to lose the, the Burgundy DNA. You know, and 14 to me is it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a of a of like a, a you know a good balance you know there's like this this beautiful balance between the tannins the colors and the you know the the, the red the red fruits flavors that that matches with the acidity that was bring by the earlier season you know so so I'd, I would stick for the reds for the fourteen 
I would stick for the Reds. Okay, great. But that's my choice, huh? I mean, <laughs> Shall we move on to the last one? Yeah, absolutely. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to pour a glass of tea, actually. So Merceau Letier, uh, to, uh, to Merceau Letier to end this beautiful, uh, beautiful tasting. Um, so Letier is a, is a very uh, unusual uh, terroir that we have. So if some of you kind of, you know, picture a bit the Merceau and Burgundy, Letier is located on top of, of Les Narvaux. And it's the, the highest, uh, we have the highest uh, terroir uh, plots in Merceau. And it's very steep over there. So this is why when they planted it in, in O2, uh, they planted it in terrace, which is a bit unusual. And uh, the TA the is, is surrounded by the forest. So it keeps a very, very cool, very, uh, very cool climate, uh, quite a lot of humidity. Uh, and it's it's uh, and it's and the soils the, the base of the soil is the white uh, molds no no how do you say it guy please help me <laughs> think about this before it's white marl marl sorry yeah white marl so this is where you get uh, thank you guy by the way uh, thank you uh, so this is where you get the the minerality and the salinity of 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 the of the Merceau, you know of the, of Letier. You know, and also it's, it's very floral. Uh, it's very floral. Les tiers in French means lin linden in English. So this is where, this is, again, you know, understanding a bit and going further your, what you, what you think or what you know about the, about, the, about the wines, you know, try to investigate and, and the names because all the names have a, have a meaning. And Les tiers is linden. This is, this is why you get like the floral notes that, that, that I reckon you, you you, you you feel and you and you smell on on, on the tea. Um, when it comes to as you as you can as you can probably feel and taste, there's a there's a very sharp acidity. You know uh, that's that's a bit of a that's also a bit of our DNA when it comes to the whites. We like the whites to be to be salt, like having this saltiness. You know this salty feeling on the palates that that brings you towards the next glass and. Uh, we, when it comes to, to the winemaking and to the vinification for the whites, we, we like to start the fermentation straight in barrels. So we press, we do those very long, very long press cycles of four to five hours where we increase slightly the, the intensity of the press throughout the, throughout the hours. So to extract carefully the juice. And then we, we, we like to start the fermentation in barrels almost straight away. And we like to work the, the, the whites in big barrels, like 350 to 450 liters, and even more if we could. Um, and so to, to kind of, you know, put on the side the, 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 the woody, the wooden, the wooden flavors brought by the, by the, by the barrels. This is, this, you know, for the whites, we don't, we don't like it. And, and this is why when the wines, when the wines are in, in barrels, we don't do any batonnage. We just let them steady and, and work, work on their own. Reason is, you know, the, especially with the warm vintages that we have, you know, you want to keep the acidity, you want to keep the tension. Otherwise, you're going you to you're gonna end up having wines that are a bit, too, a bit too flat, you know, a bit too steady, a bit, a bit heavy. Um, so these are wines that are... Um, Litier is a very good example of what we like to do for the whites. And I guess... You asked me the question about when to drink it, etc. We tend to believe that people drink whites too early. You know, uh, you know, you think about the aging for the reds, but how does it go uh, for the whites? I don't hear much question about should we keep the whites, you know, in the cellar for how long, etc. Um, I was amazed by a tasting I did one day. Uh, it was a vertical tasting of. Uh, uh, Domaine Griveaux, but Griveaux in, in Merceau, it was a monopole. And I had the chance to taste from 17, not all the years, but all the way down to 29. And we tasted the 29. And I was like, this is, a, this is a, big, a, big, a big hit, a big slap for me. Uh, I, didn't, I couldn't understand how the wine was still so fresh. You know, not almost no, 
no feeling of oxidation whatsoever, you know, uh, nothing like this. And I was like, how oh, is it possible? Um, and I guess, um, you know, just uh, not doing some batonnage, uh, keeping the wine like this, um, it's gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna age longer, obviously. Uh, that's my feeling. Um, and so this is why I, I guess the TA, you could, you can keep it for, for quite a long time. Uh, you know, I guess it will, it will evolve, of course, but, but the, you know, the, the flavors will, will change and maybe the, the, you know, the wine will, will maybe be a bit more round, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more on the, how to say, uh, not exotic notes, but more like warm notes, warm flavors. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my, my feeling about it. You know, I, don't, I want to do, we like, we want to do whites that are, that have the potential to age, you know, that's our understanding, you know, not ones that are going to be flat and, 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 and a bit boring after a couple of years, you know, because that's what we, that's what we get more and more. That's, that's my belief on anyway, but. Okay, great. Thank you. You know, what would go well with the food match? Yeah. Um, I mean, just open a bottle of TA. Uh, tonight will probably be sushi for me. Uh, because, uh, because, because, because we do like it first. And, um, you know, there's, there's a real, like we've, we've, we've sell our wines in Asia for, for a long time. Um, Japan is one of our historical markets. Uh, and I guess, uh, to me it makes sense because we all know that, you know, the Japanese food is very subtle, you know, very precise, uh, and, I guess with seafood like this, you know, the, mer the minerality, the, sal the salinity of the TA will match, of course, any kind of seafood. That's, that's, that's my belief. Um, because, because of the precision, you know, the, 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 the precision of the, of, the, of, the, of the seafood, you know, when it's not cooked with sauce or anything like this, you know, I think it matches very well. So that's my, that's my belief. Um, and I like to do, I like to, I like to taste the, I like to drink the, the TA with, uh, with, with sushi. It's like, it's very nice, um, with a beautiful fish, uh, cooked with like, you know, like nothing too fancy, just, um, just, um, you know, just, you know, cooked with butter, butter, but that's it. Uh, not adding sauce, not adding any kind of, you know, heavy, heavy sauce or anything like this. I think it, I think it matches very well. So that's 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 the way I like to drink it, to drink it, or for aperitif before. Or, uh, I like to I like to 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 eat my 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 cheese with with white as well. I think it pairs beautifully. Um, so any kind of seafood or cheese that would be my recommendation. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, and going back to my previous questions about. Yeah. This vintage, you know, with the pandemic and what's happening right now, how how has that impacted the domain and what are you what are you doing at, at the vineyard to, to make sure yes. that? Uh, of course, it was. Um, we are very scared about what would happen uh, when 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 we started to be in quarantine, um, but uh, but very like fortunately we we were allowed to to keep working in the vineyards. Which was a relief for us, like, uh, and um, and then the, the other question was obviously to manage the seasonal workers because obviously right now is the, is the busy is crazy busy in the vineyards uh, with everything that we do from debudding debudding to to how to say when you tied up the vineyards you know to the treatments to the bottling to the racking I mean this is crazy but. Uh, we managed to get masks, to get gel, to get, um, of course, gloves, and everything's going very well. Uh, you know, everybody's taking their own car, uh, not being too close from each other in the vineyards, um, and and the season is beautiful. You know, uh, we had uh, we had lots of rains during winter. Uh, we had we have a beautiful weather uh, from like a month ago, since a month ago. Uh, which the season has started like crazy, you know. We we are even more in advance compared to to seventeen. So we plan to start picking mid to late August, which is scary. But you know, 
it's the way it is. And uh, but so far so good. Like there's no there's no lack of water whatsoever for the moment. Uh, and the, the you know no frost, no hail, nothing like this. So very fortunate. So so we just yeah we have fingers crossed you know fingers crossed till the end and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, but everything has been has been has been very very nice uh, for the people working in the office. You know we've we've done like. Um, one people coming a day, another one, you know, the other day, et cetera, et cetera, to, you know, avoid uh, too much contact uh, between people. We've did our best to uh, lock the access to the winery to as many people as, as we could. Um, so, yeah, it could be worse. It could be worse. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that things are, things are going yeah. And I guess before we, we close the, today's tasting, um, ask question about more about, about your vision for the domain. You know, you've been involved for a few years now and, you know, what would you, what's your vision for the domain? What sort of heritage would you like to add to, to it? We've, uh, we've made some big, heavy, we took some big, heavy decisions uh, of, of de-planting de -planting, uh, many of our plots. So we deplanted uh, half an hectare in the Clos Bougeot. Uh, we deplanted half the Bonne Premier Cru Cruchoria that you've tasted uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, we did the same for the Savigny Premier Cru Vergeles. And the reason why we did that was that the, the, the vineyards were, you know, had suffered too much from heavy harvest, heavy yield. Because you have to imagine after the war, uh, one like the situation was not the same and, and winemakers uh, were just poor people, you know, and the growers were the ones that were, that were making money. So the winemakers were heavily, you know, uh, taking on their vineyards uh, and, and the, 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 the vine just suffered from, from, that, from that period. So, so, we, so we decided to do all of this, uh, which, is a, which is not a bet, but you know, it's, it's um, these are tricky decisions because obviously you bet on the on the long term. Uh, uh, when you when you deplan a, a, a plot, you have to wait for at least two to three years. Then you then you plan your your vines, and then you have to wait to at least five yeah five to six years until you get your first harvest. You know it's like an eight to nine years uh, bet, uh, but it was needed, and and. I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward, you know. It's going to be very exciting to have a, a new Bonne Premier Cru Couchoya White, to have the Savigny Premier Cru Vergeles back, you know, back on the menu, um, all of this. So it's, it's, this, this, this will be very, very interesting. Um, we've also started to do wines a bit outside Burgundy. Uh, so we do a Corsican Pinot Noir. Uh, we don't own the vineyards, but we... It's a 50-50 partnership where we manage the vinification and we manage the, um, the winemaking. Uh, we do the same thing in the US uh, with our importer there uh, in, in a place called Sanford in uh, Santa Barbara, on north of, of Los Angeles. So this is exciting. Uh, but, you know, as, as you see in the presentation, the roots of the Labbe family is in the spirits industry, you know, and I worked a bit in the spirits industry. So I have some ideas uh, that I would love to, or at least trying to implement, about maybe a burgundy spirit that could be, uh, that, uh, that hasn't been done. And I, I think that could, that could fit a bit what we do again, you know, because, because you taste wine, you drink wine, you can drink wine pretty much when you want, but what about a nice burgundy spirit at the end of a meal, you know? Uh, so why not, you know? That's that's ideas, um, and of course keep keep working on the, you know, in line on the on the, in the in the um, in organic in the organic you know in our philosophy in biodynamic, uh, that's 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 gonna be the a big challenge, and yeah maybe trying some trying trying things you know uh, I, myself I wanted to understand what, what was behind the whole bunch you know because when you when you get to the when you get to the to the to the to the job to the work of, of a winemaker, you want to you want to understand. And I was like, 
okay, we're doing whole bunch, but why? You know, what's the reason? So the last two years, we've did some, um, some tests, some, some, some trials uh, on small cuvee about, you know, 50% this stem, 50% whole bunch, a bit of crush whole bunch, a bit of, you know, a bit of everything. Just for me to understand, you know, what's behind. And if, you know, if, if, we, if we're not missing anything, because as, we, as we've been working in whole bunch since 87, maybe we missed something. I don't know. So, um, so we'll see. So we'll see. Uh, but... Um, but focusing on the focusing on the on the on the on the on the two estates and and especially on the Pierre Labbé because I I do believe that you know the the, the Pierre Labbé wines the way we the way we treat the vineyards the way we the way we work the wines uh, I would love them to have more recognition and I know for a fact that you know Bonn for instance you you all heard about about Bonn as the city but. And of course, you heard about the wines, but how many winemakers of Bonn can you can you can you can you can can you give me? Like you know, there's big growers like we know Jadot, we know Drouin, but what about the winemakers? And I I do believe that 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 Bonn uh, has been has been the reputation, the recognition of Bonn has been a bit swallowed by the growers. And I want to, you know, I want to put it back. I don't, I don't know. It's too cocky saying that. But I would love, I would love it to be more recognized. You know, the, these are terroir, you know, because people seek for whites from Chassagne, from Meursault, or reds from Volnay, from Pomar. But there's beautiful alternatives in Bonn, you know. Um, and I would love to have someone that, you know, puts Bonn back on the main stage the same way, for instance, Olivier Lamy did for Saint-Aubin. Because if you think about it, Saint-Aubin a couple of years ago, you know, nobody wanted it. Nobody... Nobody even heard about it. And now, you know, Paul, it's like, you can't even find a bottle and you're like, um, so I guess, um, I mean, I guess, I hope uh, those, those, those climat, those terroir in Bonn will be, you know, will have the recognition they, they, they deserve. That's my, uh, that's, my, that's my will. And we'll do our best to do it. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Of course.